Now that we've worked on our folder organization, let's move in and learn some more HTML elements. So I'll take this folder and drag it into Espresso, which we've been using in this series. I'll open up my index.html file, and here's where we left off in a previous lesson. But I'm going to go ahead and delete that so we can work from scratch. And in this lesson, we're going to be focusing on lists, block quotes, and image elements. So let's begin with a list. We learned a little bit about this in a previous lesson. So we wrap a list and we use the UL wrapper. Now this is referred to as an unordered list, UL, meaning the order is not important. So within here, each item will be wrapped within what we call an LI element, list item. Hello, and we'll change this one to world. Now, if we preview it, you can see that we've created a list. Think of a list item as bullet. Though, of course, with CSS, we can change that to anything we want. We can even remove them, which you'll find is very common. So rather than thinking of it as bullets, instead, think of it as a list of items. When you try to describe your content, if you come up with, this is a list of links, this is a list of items, this is a list of notes, that's when you would use an unordered list. Now we also have an inversion of this called OL, ordered list. Now the only difference with this is it'll be numbered by default when you need an order, number one, number two. So if you're creating a list of tasks, maybe you do an order, you could use an ordered list. Now we have one more, this one is called a definition list. And this is one of the lesser used wrappers, but they have certainly have their place. So we use a definition list, and this one's gonna be a little bit different. We have two options. We have a definition term and definition details. So DT and DD for definition details. Now, the easiest way to think of a DL is when you're working with definitions, but it doesn't only refer literally to a definition, it's when you have a term and a value. So in this case, we'll stick with the definition idea and we'll say hello, and the details will be a common English reading. So now if we preview that, can you see here by default a definition list works a little bit differently and I've always thought this was a little odd because most people never use it. But notice how it will divide the term from the details. So this is really helpful when you need to have a term and then you need to attach a value to it. This is a very semantic way to do that. If we wish to duplicate this, I'll just keep the exact same values and now you can kind of see how that works. So those are the three lists that you'll use. Most of the time, honestly, you'll find yourself using the UL most of the time, but don't forget to use these when it's semantic, when it's appropriate. All right, next we're going to take a look at block quotes. Block quotes are, as you would expect, when you're quoting somebody, it's only appropriate to put it within a block quote. So I will insert a quote, never, ever, 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 ever give up. This is one of my favorite quotes. But what separates this from any other paragraph? What describes it? What describes this sort of content? It is a quote, so we can wrap it in quotes, and you know, this is fine. If we come here, you'll see there's your quote, but we need to provide a little more description of what it is. So I'm gonna wrap it within a block quote. And now if I preview it again, you'll see that it does a couple things. One, it indents it because that's the default styling for a block quote. But more importantly now, we are accurately describing that this bit of code, this bit of markup is a quote. So we wrap it within a block quote accordingly. And the last thing we're gonna take a look at in this lesson is images, and this is something you'll use often. So why don't we go ahead and grab an image that we can reference. We'll browse the net touch, and let's say we wanna take this quiz image, and we're going to use it. Now you have a couple options here. I can right or control click and choose copy image URL. Now if I close that out, and we'll do this at the very top, and I paste that in, you're gonna see a URL. And this is the URL specifically to that image. So if I were to paste that into a new window, that references that image. So let's see how we can display this within HTML. If I preview it right now, we only get the URL. So we need to tell our HTML this is an image. And as you would expect, we use the image or the IMG element. So the IMG element, it's self-closing, meaning there's not gonna be a value in between. It's not like this. This will not work. It's not how you do it. Instead, we're going to use attributes. The first one we need is SRC, and you'll see this often. It refers to source. 
what is the source of this image? And it's going to be that path. The next attribute that you need to use, and you can get away without using it. And to prove that, let's close it. And if I preview this page now, you'll see our image. But it's very important for accessibility reasons to provide a fallback. For example, what if we insert this URL wrong, or somebody deletes this image from that path? To simulate that, we'll remove one letter. And if I click Preview, now you get this right here. And instead, we need to provide a fallback, an alternate option. And this is where we're going to use Alt for alternate text if the image isn't available. And we'll say Quiz Image, or whatever you want to call it. Always provide an alternate text that describes the image that you're showing. Okay, so in this lesson, we discussed a lot some of the most important elements you'll use in your everyday coding. Unordered lists, ordered lists, definition lists, block quotes, and images. And now, you're well on your way to learning HTML.